social distancing I was using yesterday while fishing. You can use a fishing pole to point at people to keep them away six feet if you guys need to. But make sure you're nice about it. And we also want you guys to start maybe trying something new. Like today, where's Kaylin at? Can I borrow your phone real quick, bud? Absolutely. All right, so you take a phone and then you go like something like this, like, hey, Hope Church and Smile. And then you're going to share that to our family Facebook page so we can see all your guys' great faces. Like this one's going to hit there real soon. Here, Kaylee, you want to share that real quick? That'll be there. I'll be like this, all big and beautiful and happy. So I just want to tell you guys, make sure you use a microphone if you have one so you can hear the announcement guy too. Uh, anyways, have a great time. This is obviously something that's new for us. I, I encourage you to... Uh, share pictures, communicate online, give people calls throughout the day and check on them. And if you can help, obviously deliver groceries to somebody and communicate with them in a safe way. If they cannot leave the house, maybe we can take care of our church family that way. Um, I know we're all working really hard to stay positive, and I encourage the whole congregation, our whole Hope family, to stay strong and to show others what Hope Christian Church is about. We're not afraid of nothing. We're here for love and God wins. I love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the music. Enjoy Stan. And peace on out. Oh, yeah. 
all of our fears, we take all of our worries, we lay them down at your feet this morning, and we open up our hearts to your truth. We lean not on our own understanding, but Lord, we look to you, and we trust you. We love you, and we thank you for making a way for us to be with you. And as we gather together as a family all over this place, God, we feel you and we know that you are here with us. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, ho, church, 10 o'clock online worship celebration. Are you glad to be worshiping together right now? Go ahead and clap and celebrate in your home. I know you'd rather be here, and I usually say, are you glad to be here? But we are still worshiping, and we can be glad that we're worshiping. I want to ask you to uh, give it up for Gina Darby and for Hope Rising and, and for our tech team. Uh, I want to ask you to, to praise God for them right now. I want to tell you something. We're in the middle of fixing our building up. Ministry is like flying the plane while you're attaching the wings. And we're in the middle of trying to make the facility sound good, dealing with sound issues. Uh, we're in the middle of setting the place up and then the virus hits and so now we're switching to an online uh, service. And we're doing it uh, with, with people that have real jobs. And we're trying to work on things as we're doing it. And I'm so thank I'm saying all that because I'm so thankful for our tech team. I'm so thankful for our musicians. Everybody was given the option to not come if they didn't feel like they should, uh, but they all showed up. And uh, you know, I'm reading the comments. I saw your comment, Randy, about turning Kaylin loose on the drum set. You can't see it, but we got a killer kit over in the corner. And we're gonna turn him loose, but we gotta wait till we're, we're ready for sound and we've got him in his cage. Uh, and he's gonna go wild in there. Uh, and, and, but but we're, we're in the process. But the thing about us is we will not stop worshiping and, and tell we, wait until we got everything perfect. We do it on the fly. We do it every day. It's our lifestyle, amen? And so I'm so excited that you've joined us and that you're with us. Last week, we were sideways. I think we're, we got that fixed. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll worship the Lord sideways too, but uh, we're glad that you joined us. Uh, I have some sad news. It's happy. Uh, we're happy for their family, but I have some news. I'm going to call Megan up, Megan Colston. Megan is uh, our office administrator until now, and uh, she is uh, moving on because she uh, has moved the bigs. Her family is there. I'm going to have you stand over there. We're going to practice social distancing, Megan. Usually I do these, these announcements arm in arm, which I love, but today we're, we're going to model social you know, distancing. But Megan, uh, I saw Megan one time. I was setting up some chairs for our prayer night, and everybody was fellowshipping, which was cool. I didn't mind, but Megan comes up and starts setting up chairs. And Megan's that kind of person. And I always believed... You don't hire based on a job description. You get warriors, people who are sold out. Because a lot of people don't understand ministry. They think it's about office hours, but there are no office hours. Jesus' office was everywhere. His pulpit was portable. And so you get calls at all hours for, do you have the number of so-and-so, or did you know so-and-so's? And so you get... I'm not complaining, I love it. It's my life, it's a calling. But you get people on staff that get that. They're sold out lawyers. And I see Megan, we called her office administrator and, and she did great in that and she helped us so good as our treasurer. But I've also seen her loading bricks for the wall that the expansion guys were doing. And she just said, whatever it takes. That's how I would describe Megan, whatever it takes. And so uh, her family's moved to Biggs. Her husband works there, Trevor, who's also been involved in Hope Ministry. We love Trevor. Her son, Aaron, who's helped us. One time he found a dead animal for me under the cabin. Uh, he's helped in ministry. It's a family affair. Um, we, we've still got her daughter, Elizabeth, here, Queen Elizabeth. We're blessed to still have her in ministry. Uh, but their family lives in Biggs, and it's so good to worship and work where you live. And so I told her, I totally understand. And uh, so today she's stepping down and I just wanted to make her get up here and pray for her before she leaves. And I have some, something for you, May. I know uh, things are exciting at the grocery store these days. So I got a bag from the grocery store and uh, I got this for you, May. I know they're out of uh, wipes. Clorox wipes for the counters and stuff. So what I did is I got you some Clorox and a paper towel so you can make your own wipes to clean your counters and clean your house. 
And then I got, oops, I'm supposed to be putting these on before I do all this, because you're gonna, you're gonna have this. Let me put these on here. My wife's gloves don't fit real good. Uh, and uh, this one's awesome that I got you. It's a uh, bottle of water. I don't know if you've been to the store, but uh, that's out, that's gone. Used to have plenty of that. And I got you and Trevor a bottle of sparkling cider for those romantic quarantine nights. And you guys can have that and share that together. Now you and I like breakfast. We're always doing breakfast burritos and enjoy breakfast. But as you know, there's no eggs at the store. So I got you this Smart Ones ham and cheese scramble. And I knew you would like that. I want you to uh, really work on keeping your toilet clean. So I got you this, uh, this, this Lysol uh, Power Plus for your toilet. And uh, then this is good, uh, Mucinex. This has been on the news. What I like about this, it not only controls the cough, it relieves nasal and, and chest congestion. But here's my favorite part. It thins and loosens mucus. And I want your mucus to be loosened up, uh, man. So I got that for you. And then, uh, then this is precious right here. Toilet papers are out, but you have some wet wipes. These wet wipes are awesome. They go where other things don't go. I mean, they just work really good. And you feel refreshed uh, with those. And uh, Tylenol has been in the news a lot. And, uh, so you got you some Tylenol. Uh, and then lastly, uh, this prize is worth more than my weight in gold. This is, this is incredible. I prayed about it, but I want you to know how much you mean to me. So I got you one roll of toilet paper. <laughs> so this is for you, me. And uh, um, actually, I did get you, I know you like Starbucks, and since we can't touch each other, I got you uh, online, you'll get it tonight, uh, um, and a card where you can go and, and have a bunch of coffees at Starbucks. But the key is there's a Starbucks on Skyway, and I want you to come back and visit us. So you use that at the uh, Skyway uh, Starbucks whenever you can to come see us. I'll go ahead and uh, give you this now. I bought these to be safe. Oops. Let's get that in there. I practiced at home. There you go, Meg. <laughs> and uh, so I want. Oh, we'll get that later. I wanted to also um, call Kim. Uh, Kim McMillan, like Megan, uh, was back. I guess I could take these off. Was vacuuming. Uh, we for weeks as we moved into here. This place was a disaster. And uh, she would be here Saturdays on her own time, serving, cleaning, vacuuming. And uh, right after, not far long after Megan told me she needed to move on um, to be with her family and Biggs. I said, I knew she, Kim had worked for the county. And I said, so what did you do for the county? She said, oh, payroll, HR. And I was like, hmm. And, the Lord has delivered you into my hands. And uh, so I talked to Meg about that, and Meg worked with Kim, and felt like it was a good decision. Gina felt like it was a good decision, decision and Dasu. And so we asked Kim. Now, she just happened to be um, retired and moved up here and got an awesome house not far away. So she's a good person to take over our payroll, our treasury work. And so I wanted to pray a uh, prayer and thanks to Megan and pray for uh, Kim's ministry. So let's pray together. Father, <clears throat> the greatest thing about ministry on the earth, next to knowing you, is our relationships. And you bring people in our lives. It's been my honor to baptize Meg and do her wedding and serve beside her on the front lines. She's one of the most positive people I ever met who uh, could take on one thing after another and not complain. She would run into a wall if you called us to 
And I thank you for her blessing our church. And I pray for her as she begins this new beginning there in Biggs. I thank you that she'll be there where they live. And uh, I thank you that it's not too far away and we're still going to get to see her. And pray, pray that you bless her family, God. Bless her and Trevor. Bless her and her new work there and, and her family. And uh, I thank you for her. God, thanks for bringing Kim, who is also sold out and a warrior and has already been a blessing to us as we moved up on the ridge. I pray for her ministry. Uh, thank you that she's stepped up for such a time as this and use her to your glory. And we dedicate this time, her ministry, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Virtual hug. <laughs> Virtual hug. <laughs> so... We're dealing with how hope handles COVID-19. CO stands for Corona. And the Latin word for Corona means crown or halo. If you look at a graphic of the coronavirus, you see uh, it's like a little crown or halo around it. The VI, V-I in VI is for virus in COVID. That's Latin for slime or poison. The D in COVID-19 is for disease. The 19 stands for uh, the fact that it was identified at the end of 2019, 2019. So it's COVID-19. Most people, the symptoms are mild, but the danger is that it's easily transmitted and highly contagious. We've had other viruses. This one is known for being uh, uh, more infectious than some. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous virus. But I wanted to, to remind us all that we live in a dangerous world. Last year, 39,000 people died on the road. Uh, last flu season, 340,000 people died, mostly 75 and above. In China, several thousand have died from COVID-19, but on an average day, 4,400 people die in China. There's so many people there. 400,000 people die annually of malaria. 15 million die every year of heart disease and stroke. So I'm not trying to belittle COVID or coronavirus. I'm just trying to put it in a perspective. We live in a dangerous world. And what our country is trying to do is flatten the curve to, to bring it down so that it gives more time for them to discover a vaccine and so that hospitals aren't overrun. And actually a lot of us, a lot of people are gonna get it and it will build immunity in time as well. So how do we view a pandemic as people of faith? We call ourselves hope. How does hope, not just hope church, although that's part of what I mean by this title, how does the concept of hope in Christ deal with a pandemic? We say every week, we have for years, when we finish our service in Christ, we always have hope. And I mean that with all my heart, and I believe that with all my heart. So how does hope handle COVID-19? First of all, we don't overreact. You know, as a dad, one of the things I had to learn was not to panic. I figured it out that it was my job when everybody else was going crazy with four kids, things that scared me happened. I had to try to not panic. There were a few times I lost it, like when a, a garden snake got in the kitchen in Oklahoma and I got up on the kitchen counter. Uh, or when I got on the bed because there was a mouse that went down the hall with my wife who were on the bed looking at it. And I always found it, figured out, oh, that's my job to, to go get that. And that intensified in paradise with rattlesnakes. But I digress. Uh, my point is, I, I figured out I had to try to be calm. And I think that's what we got to do right now as believers, as people of hope. I'm not putting down your feelings of a human being. You, you shouldn't feel guilty or ashamed for anything you feel, but we have to fight for um, not overreacting. We have to trust in the Lord. You know, panic in the Bible is associated with those who don't know God. 
It is associated with those, the people of the nations who serve the gods, little g, of the world. Panic is not associated with the followers of Jesus. Psalm 112, 6 and 7 says, Surely the righteous will never, say never in your, in your home right now, or wherever you are watching on the door, say never. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Not trusting in ourselves, trusting in something greater than ourselves, trusting in the Lord. One of the challenges during quarantine is we're not created to be alone. And have you noticed that? That it's difficult being quarantined? You know why? It's because we were not created to be alone. And we have to fight when we're alone. Uh, we have to fight with things like our thought life. To think about things that are pure and lovely and beautiful like Paul writes in Philippians. And I would encourage everyone to read Philippians, to read Colossians, to read the Psalms as you pray during this time. Everything's changed. Things are happening in our lifetime we've never seen. Schools closing or going online, travel bans, grocery stores are really a trip now, aren't they? Uh, even Amazon doesn't have toilet paper, are you kidding me? Uh, we make decisions based on what we know though, as people of hope. That's what we need to do. We need to make decisions based on, on what we know and we need to focus on this moment. I've been laughing about how we've set these plans. And, uh, you know, like in 2018, we were going to have the great grand opening with the expansion. We were going to write scriptures on the cement uh, before we covered it with carpet. But the day before that, the fire came. And then here lately, I've been talking about a grand opening here at our new digs here in Megalia. And uh, Shane was going to come, and he's still in the future, but he's going to come and paint for us. And I was thinking of ways to get a lot of people here. We have campaigners coming from San Jose to help us to reach out to our community. All these plans and everything changed. I think sometimes we say, this is what I'm going to do instead of planning. God goes, ha, <laughs> He laughs. What we're forced to do right now is live day by day, moment by moment. And uh, as disciples of Jesus, we need to filter how we make decisions. Because as disciples of Jesus, we make decisions different than the world. I've been watching hours and hours of messages by scientists, by pastors, and one that really hit me was Craig Rochelle's message, and I'm going to steal some of his material. And that's about the ideal of, of Romans 12, 2, where it says, do not. Everybody say not. 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 We're going to talk about not today. Where it says, do not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed and renewed in your thinking. That's what we studied in our transform uh, campaign last year, some of you will remember. Do not. And so the first point I want to share with you is we live by faith, not by fear. We're different than the world. We live by faith, not by fear. In John 14, 27, Jesus, who's leading his disciples, he says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Listen to the New Living Translation in that same verse. I'm leaving you with a gift. Listen to the gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. We do not think like the world. We, not, we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. And so we are called to live by faith and not by fear. And so we cannot give in to panic. And I'm not saying you, saying this to you like I don't understand the temptation. I'm, I'm talking to myself too. 
And I think we need to remind each other. I'm so glad you're sharing comments. I hope you'll do that when we do these broadcasts. Talk to one another. Share with one another. Remind one another what we have. We do not live by fear. We live by faith. Number two, uh, I, I want you to think about the fact that God does not panic. God, God's not up in heaven going, ooh, I didn't see this one coming. You know, I was blessing the people and working on stuff here in the world and in the universe and this whole virus just snuck up on me. I want to remind you that God is in control. Our Father, our good, good Father. I don't believe He caused this to happen. I believe nature of a fallen world caused this to happen. It's, it's a natural result of a broken world. And there's been other viruses and things that have come from animals. I've, I've been studying them, the ones of history. And, and there's been things that happen in this broken world. But God is still sovereign, our good, good Father. And He is not up there going, wow, I didn't know that was going to happen. So we live by faith, not by fear. We remember that God is, in, is sovereign. God is in control. Thirdly, we are sacrificial, not selfish. We are sacrificial, not selfish. Now, technically, we're selfish. You don't have to tell a two-year-old, hey, I want you to try to be selfish, right? Uh, you don't give lessons on selfishness. Let's have some selfish lessons. It's a natural thing to say, mine, when you're little. I want this, I want that. But when we become the redeemed of Jesus, and we get a redeemed nature, we reflect Christ, his love, and his generosity. Philippians 2.3 says, do not be selfish, but have more concern for others than yourself. When I first saw that, I thought, what? How do you have more concern for others than yourself? And then I read the, the rest of that chapter. It says, have this mind have this attitude in you that was in Christ Jesus. And it talks about how though he would have everything in heaven, he left it all to become a servant, to become a human, and to give his life. And God exalted him above all. And that's why we say Jesus is Lord. But he thought of us more than himself. That's the redeemed nature. Technically, we're selfish, like a two-year-old, but the redeemed nature changes us. And God says, have this attitude in you. The early church faced extraordinary persecution in hard times and difficult. Extraordinary. Thrown out of their homes. Killed. Tortured. And yet, they, 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 they continued their faith. And when they first began, it reads in Acts 2.46... They continued to meet. You know, one of the most difficult things right now is us not being able to get together. And we will. We will get back together physically. But I want you to know we're going to get together. We're still going to get together on our broadcast. We're still going to get together online. We will not stop getting together. We didn't work on this broadcast because uh, we didn't have anything to do. We worked on this broadcast, and we're still working on it. I'm saying we, but the tech team is, and, and the musicians are working on this, because we will not stop. We will not stop. Nothing will stop us proclaiming Jesus. Nothing's going to stop us connecting with one another. We will not stop. And it says in Acts 2.47, they continued praising God and the Lord continued to add to their number. That brings me to the next point. We live by faith, not by fear. Our Father is sovereign. We are sacrificial, not selfish. But the next point is we shine the light. We don't hide it. We shine the light. We do not hide it. Matthew 5, 15 and 16 talks about being the light of the world. And Jesus talks about, you don't take a light and put it under a bowl. You put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. And, and, and a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right now, people are unsettled in our world. You can see that on the news. You can see that on social media. Right now, uh, people are anxious. 
right now, people are uncertain. What about you, Hope? You know who you are? You're a hope giver. You're a faith deliverer. You are light. You shine in the darkness. You are walking around with hope. You have something that a world doesn't have and they need desperately. Yeah, this virus is contagious, but I pray Christ followers get more contagious and that we spread faster and farther than COVID-19. That we spread the love of God. That we spread the hope of God. This life is a dress rehearsal. We're never going to be here forever. You've heard me joke, don't love this life too much. You'll never get out of here alive. So this is our time. This is our time to shine. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, but it is why we're here right now. To shine. You're a hope giver. You're a faith dealer. You're a light to shine in a dark world. I'm praying that we get contagious spreading love. I know there's hate going on. There's political hate. People are using it to argue about politics. Puke! Who wants to just sit around and argue every day about this party or that party? Boring! Boring! It's so easy to argue. It's so easy to be critical. How about love? How about encouragement? How about being a light, a light in a place of hope? Spreading faith. When the world grows darker, the light of Jesus shines brighter. We are the body of Christ. We do not hide our light. We do not grieve. I want to share a few verses with you that have our word for the day, not. Everybody say not. not. We do not grieve like those who have no hope. We do not think like the world thinks. When the angel showed up to announce the coming of Jesus, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Uh, Jesus said, I did not come for the healthy, but for the sick. He said, I did not come for the righteous, but for sinners, for the hurting, for the broken. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Jesus does not deliver us into temptation. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We walk by faith, not by sight. God did not give us a spirit of fear. We are not praying for our will, but thy will be done. We're saved by grace, not by works. So brothers and sisters, I will not belittle your pain ever. You know, those of you who know me know I care about you and care about people. And I don't like to see people hurt. It bothers me. But the Spirit of God says to be bold, to be courageous. And we will not stop. We will not stop gathering. Uh, we'll do anything we can. We'll discover ways. We're still learning about groups, how we can do small groups, how we can do different things online. We're not going to stop meeting. We're not going to stop praising. We're not going to stop singing. We will not stop. We do not live by fear, but we live by faith. Our Father is sovereign. He's in charge. You remember that when Satan tries to get you to be afraid. Your Father, your Daddy, your good, good Daddy who loves you. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you more. There's nothing you can do to get him to make him love you less. He's crazy about you. He is sovereign. He's in charge. Remember that. Remember, we're not selfish. We're sacrificial as a people of God. Think of ways to help one another. We have a Hope Family page now on Facebook that we're, we're asking people to share needs to help one another. We can do that on our Hope Church Paradise uh, page in Facebook. We can email, we can call. Let's take care of one another uh, as we go through this time of waiting. And do not stop worshiping our God. We are the light. We have hope. 
and our God will see us through. Amen. I want to say this, and I don't want to say it in a cocky manner. It's a thought I got this week. There are some things worse than dying from a virus or, or dying in this world, and that's not knowing the Lord. That's what I think about when I think about my time. I'm loving life. I'm living to the max. I'm partying, man. But when my time comes, I'm gonna. It's like falling through a trap door and landing in the arms of Jesus. And you put your faith in Christ. You're gonna live with Him forever and ever. And you're gonna be with your brothers and sisters forever and ever in a place. There'll be no virus. There'll be no sickness. There'll be no tears. We will be in a forever family reunion. Till then, we have hope. Let's pray. Father, I, I say these things uh, only because I read them in your word and from your spirit. I don't know what I would do without you, Lord. I'm so thankful that we have you and we can be bold because of you, not because of ourselves. And Lord, I, I thank you for the hope that we have. I thank you for the assurance that we have of our salvation by grace, by faith. I pray for anyone who's joining our, our worship celebration right now online that's going through especially hard time to feel your love right now, to feel your presence. I pray for healing. I pray, God, for a vaccine. I pray for this to stop the virus, but I pray while we wait and deal with it that we feel your presence. Um, if there's anyone that's new to you, I pray right now, they'll just say, Jesus, I, I make you the Lord of my life. I step over the line now. I will be a Christ follower. Make yourself known to me. I pray for those of us that are believers to live with hope, to seize the moment. This is our defining hour to be the light, to draw people to you. We're committed to that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
<laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for all our blessings. And uh, we pray that we will be a force of hope on the ridge and beyond that brings you glory, God. Not unto us, but to you be the glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, before uh, we give and uh, celebrate our last song, what is our purpose? Building relationships, relationships that last forever. How do we do that? Love God, love people. So remember, every single day this week, in Christ, we always have hope. Thank you for joining us. All right, Hope, you know this one. And I am excited to hear you sing from wherever you are. Ooh, ooh, I can see the clouds rolling.